Hi, and welcome back. Here we are with the clothed figure that we have all set up with our mannequin and a very crude drawing session. I'll have to apologize for that. Maybe later we'll do a better drawing session, but you're going to see that things for me really start happening in the inking stage. So I don't care how crummy my drawings are. I don't let anybody ever see them. If you're really good at drawing, you should have a Wacom tablet and you should be really doing nice drawings of this layer. That really helps inking and coloring and the final presentation of things. Now we're about to move on to inking. Now you would think that you would jump right onto the uh right onto the pen over here, the way that we did with the pencil. And we'd start inking. But you notice these jagged lines and so on that happen during penciling? You can make them smoother through configuring your tablet or your drawing software. But what I prefer is actually being in complete control of my lines. And I'm about to show you what I'm talking about. Now over on the right, we're gonna to go to layers and please ignore the fact that there are several layers that are not displayed because I've already carried out this exercise and the layers are there so I can magically go and presto, here it is once the lecture starts getting boring, which it's beginning to get. So let's head on to here, the drawing layer that we have, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it, and the new layer is going to be, instead of a raster layer, it's going to be a vector layer. And we will call it, I typically call it ink. And we'll go ahead and we'll call that ink. So this will be our inking layer. Now, Rather than jump directly into things, I want to give you a quick lecture on the kind of inking that we're going to do. Because we're not going to use the pen. We're going to use a spline to more or less trace the outline and draw the major lines of what we want out of our drawing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to get rid of all of our background stuff so we just have a white piece of paper and I'm going to start drawing lines on this vector layer which differs from the raster layer we've been working on for sketching. Raster layers are this bit is um, is black or it's red or it's slightly purple. It does it bit by bit. Vectors actually set up points along the vector and then have calculations that define how the points connect. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm sure you're confused by now. But if I go to the pen and let's set this up. Okay, it's on four. That's good. So I draw a line, which is white. Let's um, go to the color and we'll make it black. There we go. Let's make it thicker too. Something more like 12. There we go. And I draw a line. Now, this just looks like the same line as on a raster layer. But notice this. If we come down to this funny little symbol down at the bottom, which is, it can be many things, but correct line is one of them. You know, remove dust and control point and all these things pop up there in the menu. But it's the very bottom up above the color control. Now, if we choose control point, let's go over to this line that we just drew. Look at all these points that popped up. Because of the jiggliness of me drawing this line using a mouse, actually, it has many points at which the direction or the calculation of the line changed. But it has far less to store, notice. Vector files and vector drawings are far more efficient than raster. Because rather than storing every point on this line and what color it is, it just stores the major points at which the calculation for the curve of the line changes. And then it puts in the new calculations. So the line can continue to be drawn. And what it becomes is a vector or a number of points along a line rather than being a raster or every pixel along the line being drawn. Now, these are a lot of control points. 
And by the way, any of these control points, we can grab it and we can change the vector line. So if you didn't like the way that you drew something, you just go ahead and you grab it and you modify it. But first, we're going to reduce the number of vector lines. To do that, you say, simplify vector line. And this is under, once again, it's the correct line tool right up above your color palette down in the lower left hand corner. You go to correct line, the one on the left, and you say, <coughs> the third option down, simplify vector line. Now what this is going to do is it's going to give you a tool which you can use to select the line you'd like to simplify. Now once again, let's go to control point, the top option on here where you get to see all the control points you can drag and see that there are probably, uh, 50 of them here? I don't know. We go to simplify vector line. We draw along the vector line that we would like to simplify and watch the line. The line just got smoother. All that jaggediness that I put into the line is gone. So this is one thing that you can do with the vector line. Now let's go back to control points. All those places that we can drag and see what's on the line now. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points on the line instead of a hundred. It just simplified things. And now these major control points actually have major influence on the line rather than just influencing a little bit. So that's the way that you can simplify a line that you hand draw. Now we're actually going to pull the line by creating a spline. But after we're done, I wanted to show you that a vector line you can modify. Let me show you one other way that you can modify a vector line. Well, there's many ways actually, but this is one of my favorite. It's called correct line width. Notice that there really aren't any points at the end of this line. It's all the same width. That's because I drew it with a mouse, so it doesn't have any pressure sensitivity. But I can say down here, under correct line width, right? We're still under this tool, the second tool up and the tools down here and correct line. And now we're at the, and we see the fifth tool down called correct line width. And if we look at the tool properties for correct line width, we can see that I can either thicken by one, here I can control how much I thicken when I thicken, and I can thin by Oh, 0.3. Interesting, that's a different amount. But I want to thin this line to give it thin tips. So I do that, and then I come out here, and I just keep stroking at the end of the line to what I want the line to be. And eventually, I've got it set at a very, a very low thinning rate. So there you go. Now we've got it coming to a thin line. Notice that? Now I can go to thicken, and I can go to the middle of the line and I can thicken this up. And in fact, we can go to the very end. Let's thin this out again at the very end of the line. So these are, um, this is information that's being stored with the vector that's staying, oh, okay, thin myself out right about here at this change point and uh, do it this amount. There we go. Now look at this very interesting line from the crummy one we originally drew that we were able to create by thickening and thinning lines. Well, let, let me go through the whole process, right? Control points. Here they are. I've got about seven, I think we calculated. I can simplify a vector line by getting rid of all of those things and it'll smooth it. Okay. Then I can correct line width and I can thicken and thin the line. And at the same time, I can go to control points here and I can pull major control points. Now, pinch vector line is another interesting one. This one has more major influence on the whole line than just a control point. So if you want to do kind of macro changes to your line, use a pinch vector line. I don't use it that much. I use control point more and I grab the individual control points and move them around to change my line to pull it in typically to something that I'm tracing. So that's your quick little tutorial on drawing lines. 
Let's go ahead and we'll grab this thing and we'll get rid of it. And let me bring up our host of backgrounds and let's start drawing lines the pulling vectors way instead of actually drawing. Let me show you how this works. We're going to go to, oh, where, where is it hidden? Now, this is a tough one to find. Notice there's a little ruler here. The things that can show up over here on the left to find this tool are either the direct lining to, line drawing tool that we want, frame drawing, rulers, streams, or saturation. All cool tools, but they all show up with different symbols here in the lower left, so it's hard to find. Draw a line. But it's hard to find draw a line sometimes. So anyway, here we are on draw a line. Look at these different types of lines. I can draw a straight line. Not very useful. I can draw a line with a curve in it. Still not really useful. What about this continuous curve? And that's what we're going to use. So let's go in here and make sure that we have a nice fine point on our pen. And I'm going to start tracing the outline of this penciled area that I've got. I'm going to start inking, basically. So this is the simplest of inking. Let's go ahead and rather than grab the pen, we're using this arc tool, continuous curve, under direct draw. And all you do is you pick a point. First of all, let's zoom in. I'm going to pick the hand here so I can pull this over. And I'm going to draw <clears throat> a line here down the side of the body and the skirt. So let's go ahead and here we go. Here's the line. So I'm going to start right here at this intersection. Now watch what happens here. Here's a straight line, right? I don't want straight lines. But as I move on and I curve this, just clicking along her body outline, it actually bends the line to conform to what I'm doing. So I just keep clicking more or less along this line. That really took off until I get a nice smooth curve. What we want is nice smooth curves typically. Right here we're going to go around a corner that isn't particularly smooth and let's end it there. And notice it draws the line. Now what can we do with this? If we don't like the way that this line can form, like here it looks like it's out a little bit, what we can do is go to the bottom, right, control point, let's get close to the line, and here it is, and we can move that in a little closer to the body and get rid of that white space. So all of these control points are available. Now you don't really need to minimize the control points as we did previously, because you laid them down. You decided the number of control points that are going to be here. Now, at any time, I can go over here to the eye on any of these layers and wink them out and see what I've just drawn. And here is the curve that I've just drawn. It's pretty smooth. And I'm going to wait to uh, slim and thicken the curve until I see all of my curves together. Now, it just so happens that if I keep on doing this, I'm going to end up with an inking curve like this. Here is the woman fully inked. And all I've done is I've pulled lines all the way around her. I assume you probably wouldn't like to see that. The next thing that I did was that I went to Uh, correct line width and I did thin width and then I went to the ends of the lines that I wanted to be thinner the folds in her skirt and I thinned them down I also did the same with this line this part in the middle of her head and the V down here at the bottom of her neck. So this is the way that you end up outlining the original character. Now I can pull back in the original character. So you can see here is 
the 3D figure. And here is the drawing or the, yeah, the drawing layer that I did. And here now is the inking layer, <laughs> inking layer that I've laid down. Okay, let's end it there.